before I let you go, I, I did want to uh, pick your brain about this one thing, and you briefly discussed it on your stream. Uh, Dragon Demands and another credible Twitter user, Redanian Intelligence, were reporting mm. that we saw some uh, behind the scenes, not, I would say it's behind the scenes, maybe it's like a leaked photo of what it looked like to be an undead thrall, uh, undead white. Mm. No, I wouldn't say white, but on the thrall, uh, on the behind-the-scenes footage of House of the Dragon Season 2, leading people to believe that the White Walker plot may slip in to House of the Dragon. Now, I have to say, yeah. um, obviously, the any illusion, any they don't they never really allude to the White Walkers or the others in the Fire and Blood history book, which is what House of the Dragon is based off of. So this is all completely original, just like the dagger in season one, the dagger alluding to the prophecy and the great threat in the North. I thought the way yes. Condal, like the way Ryan Condal handled the dagger, I thought was pretty good. It doesn't exactly lead into Game of Thrones because let's all be honest, the way Game of Thrones ended with the White Walkers was not great. But it, it, it mm -hmm. still connects to the original Game of Thrones in a very interesting way, and it sets up motivations for Rhaenyra and, like, you know, all this other stuff. I thought Ryan Condal did a good job. I don't know how I feel about the undead coming in in Season 2. Mm. Like, I think mm. that's a bit much. I think that it will ultimately be just kind of, um, like, like a fun... It'll just be kind of like a fun cameo thing, maybe a little battle or something like that. But I don't think it's going to be a big thing. It might give motivation to Northerners or something, or it might give some motivation to Jace. The Jace stuff doesn't matter because, you know, Jace eventually, spoilers, Jace eventually dies. They all eventually die. Uh, but the, uh, but the, um, so you can, you could, you could do like, I, I could see, okay, imagine this plot. Like Jace arrives in the North. And he, you know, he begins to talk to the Starks and learn all about them to try to get this alliance. And they start talking about what's important to them. And he meets the Night's Watch and he flies his dragon to the wall and they go beyond the wall. And then he runs into some dead and they have a battle or something like that. And he kind of, and then they kind of, un, you know, he, the, the Starks make a deal saying, okay, well, we'll we're going to support you. But after all of this, you have to come up and like, you know, uh, defend the north or whatever or like support the watch and jace makes some sort of agreement like that you know because i will say that in fire and blood and fire and blood is um the more the more i analyze fire and blood the more holes i find in it and and the more i think that george slapped it together really fast without thinking about it but um in the plot of like who rhaenyra's allies are there's no really good explanation on why the the northerners support Rhaenyra. Um, it's just not explained. They kind of say like some general things, like oh, they were angry at 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 Alisane's, uh reforms, but you're like, well, okay, but why does that cause you to support you know Rhaenys in the uh, in the great council over Viserys because they're, they're both related to Jaehaerys. Like, like there's no real explanation on like why they choose one side or the other. Um, and so, you know, he tried to bring in the, the, this pact of ice and fire, but we're, we're not really sure what exactly, you know, was part of it or why they were, they were supporting Rhaenys before that and things like that. So um, all of that is open. You can probably just, you know, you know, throw it in there and um, it all doesn't matter because these characters are going to die. <laughs> so, so two things. The I first thing is I like that idea. I think it would add to the extra, for, they have to have a reason why Jace would go beyond the wall because if Ryan Condal is following Fire and Blood closely, we already have a moment in Fire and Blood where Queen Alysanne decades ago tried to fly over mm. the wall with her dragon but the dragon just wouldn't go over the wall so jace would probably go beyond the wall without his dragon and yeah yeah if he doesn't they have to have a really good reason as to why jace would go to the right Night's but Watch. then again in, in game of thrones in game of thrones like the dragons had no problem going over the wall 
that's Game of Thrones. Ryan Condal seems to be following like the books a bit closely. We'll see. We'll see how he does it. We'll see how he does it. I I would like it if he included because he includes he includes little tidbits from the books. That was a little tidbit yeah. from Alice Sane's time in Night's Watch. So, um, they have to have mm. a good reason why he would go beyond the wall. And if he does fight the undead, I think it would add to the extra layer of tragedy that he has this information, and then before he's able to tell his mother. He dies. Although you could also yes. argue, why didn't he send a raven? See, now I'm already discovering the plot holes. Why didn't he send a raven yeah, yeah, to yeah. his mother about it? Or maybe he does. The second I mean, and, thing and it is, also doesn't. I mean, it, it kind of doesn't matter if he tells Rhaenyra because she's, you know, I mean, Rhaenyra already believes something supernatural is is going to happen and she's important and dagger and all that. But it also all doesn't matter because Rhaenyra eventually dies. Right, but this is first hand account from her own son. Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra can find out about it. Rhaenyra could find out about it, and and it also doesn't matter because she's gonna die. So it doesn't, you know, like you you can kind of reveal as much information as you want because the characters are just gonna die. So the, right? the Starks also can't. True, but the Starks also can't know about this in great detail because why didn't they also pass this information down? You would have to explain right. why Ned you, Stark doesn't know about this. You'd have to. I, I I do admit that the Winter Wolves themselves and the Northerners like have to not have to have to somehow lose the information. That you know maybe some night maybe some Night's Watch people can can see it and no one believes them or something. But you're right that like if Cregan Stark finds out about the undead and the White Walkers, then that's a problem. You know, he's 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 a person that needs to not know. <laughs> you know, yeah. And the other, the second, he would then pass it down. The second thing is about the 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 Northerners supporting Rhaenyra. I, I think um, maybe this is just a show only thing. It's been a minute since we went over everything, but I remember the way the way I took a, what I took away from them supporting Rhaenyra is not only the pact that Jace makes with Cregan about uh, was it Sarah Snow or another family member of his? Pretty sure it was Sarah Snow. That he... Well, the rumor, the rumor is that he has romance with Sarah Snow, um, but he, of course, like cannot actually. Um, uh, he's already betrothed, you know, to to Bela. So um, all we know is that that is that there was a pact, and according to Mushroom, he secretly married. Sarah Snow, which led to the pact, but, um, you know, but I, I guess it, according to the pact, it's the firstborn daughter of Jace would marry Cregan's son, Rickon. That's the actual, that's the actual pact. And but, some some people yeah. were saying how there's also a theory that maybe Jace left behind a dragon egg or something. I don't I don't know if there's any validity to that. That just people just making up theories. But um, right, the the pact of ice and snow could also be uh, maybe Jace goes goes over there and there's like a secondary plot for season two where Cregan is fighting his uncle for control of the North, and I guess Jace helps out Cregan, and, you know, the pact is formed officially in friendship, where the Starks and the Targaryens will always have each other's backs. So, I, you could argue that would be why. And also, in Season 1, I don't know if it was the uh, the Maester at Dragonstone or another lord who says it, there's never been a Stark who forgot his his oath. So, there it is. I guess, I guess mm, that answers mm. that. Um... But yeah, like I, the undead showing up. Uh, the White Walkers had such a poor showing in the final season of Game of Thrones that when HBO had their thirty million dollar Blood Moon pilot about the origins of the White Walker, well, about the White Walkers, they chose to scrap it because it just wasn't that great. Which, I, in hindsight, was a good decision because you know people like dragons and crazy white people and incest. So that's kind of Game of Thrones, the fight for the Iron Throne. No Iron Throne in a Game of Thrones prequel is kind of dumb. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if they have some stuff like left over from the pilot that they can use. You know, just some 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 sets, some makeup. I don't know. Hmm. Probably not. They probably scrapped all that crap. I mean, if they were yeah. smart, yeah. But they threw away thirty million dollars instead of it's even weird, releasing it. It's weird it. how quick. Yeah, I know. It's weird how they just like. It's weird how. When they, they break down and destroy stuff after movies and shows are done. It's amazing to me. But, yeah. 
But uh, no, You're like right. uh, the undead. Mm, I I liked how it was subtle in season one. It was this thing in the background, just like in game in the first earlier seasons of Game of Thrones. You know the walkers are there, but in in the background, it's in the back of your mind because the fight for the Iron Throne is right right now important. Okay, cool. Same with this. You know, the fight for the Iron Throne is important, but in the back of your mind, there's that thing with the dagger. So we'll see how they play it. I trust Ryan Condal to handle it very well. We'll see how they do it. We'll 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 see how they do it. 